We've returned with an interesting fox tail. Yes, you're looking at a small red fox who has actually made his home in the backyard in Stanford. That's right. One of our viewers, Bill, emailed us these photos. He says this fox and two others have been hanging out in his yard for about a year now. According to the Department of Environmental Protection, it's not unusual to see a red fox during the day. Foxes are not nocturnal and prefer open spaces. Their normal range is about two to four square miles, but they seem to enjoy living near us, too. They can look adorable, but you might uh, want to keep your distance because they are wild. But look at this. Bill was also able to get this photo. It's amazing. It's a stare down between this fox and his cat right in the middle of the street. I'm sure neither knew what to think of the other, but we want to thank you, Bill. Bill Wayne from Stanford for snapping these uh, fabulous uh, photos. And back with me, our fabulous co-host, we have Toby and Gracie, the wonderful Great Danes, with daddies Brian and Paul. And I'm sure they can't wait to learn how they can make their yard even more friendly. Maybe not so friendly that the red fox wants to come and live, but friendly enough so that dogs and other pets can roam without uh, being harmed. And take a look at this house here. It's, it's really beautiful and well manicured, and it's pet friendly. But it really takes a great balance to achieve that. Sometimes you uh, want to... Leave it up to the professionals. And that's why we've invited Ken to the show, who is owner of Ken's Landscape Designs in Connecticut. Ken has the magic touch when it comes to landscaping, and we would like to applaud him for making sure his designs include our beloved pets in the process. Welcome, welcome to the show, Ken. Even though I was going to say your wife is allergic, so you can't have pets, you say, well, we can have outdoor pets. Right. <laughs> right. So uh, is it difficult uh, to make the landscaping pet friendly? I know there are a lot of things one has to think about. Well, it's not so much difficult. It's more um, getting to know the family, getting to know the pets being part of the family, um, their activities and what they do, if they're going to chew on shrubs or not. There's quite a few shrubs that are poisonous so you have to, to animals careful, right? that if they're going to chew them, they're going to get sick and <laughs> from anywhere from a nausea to, uh, of course, death. And some, some you might be surprised to learn. We're going to put up some, ah, there's her tip, some uh, tips that you provided with us, uh, for us uh, so that folks can keep these in mind. And you just said that. Uh, you want to avoid potentially dangerous or infectious plants, of course. So find out what those are. Uh, you want to try to use natural or, or organic fertilizers and controls when it's possible. Right. Uh, you want to protect your pets from predators uh, when possible, like that fox. Uh, you want to divert water runoff from pet areas. That's very interesting. And plan for pet waste management. Those right. are very good tips. Right. Um, right from the start, um, the American Animal Hospital Institute has issued over 700 different plant species that are poisonous to animals. That's a good thing to check with anytime you put anything in your yard. Uh, first, if your pet is chewing on anything, especially cats, cats love to chew on things just to, to really find out what they are. Find out what they are. And right. I know you, They're curious. You've also provided us with some photos of some of your before and after designs. Tell me how it works. Does the person come to you and say, please make my house more pet friendly and uh, my landscape as well? Yeah, a lot of them just come looking for landscaping to start with. But um, then we kind of sit down with an interview process. We figure out you know, what kind of pets they have. and incorporate everything into the family, then come up with a design for them. And you um, want to keep it safe. Or for someone like you who can have pets, uh, you want to show them how they can put them in their right. yard. This, I guess this that, is that a, must koi be a koi pond here pond, that's right. uh, under, uh, under construction. Absolutely. Um, yeah, koi pond is one thing that you do have to be careful of. Like I said, with the water runoff, mm -hmm. you don't want the runoff running into the koi pond. You'll harm the fish. You have to keep that in mind. What other services do you provide, Ken? Uh, most of it's just design services. Okay. We do installs in certain areas, but a lot of uh, a lot of too far. You know, we go too far out. Uh, we're usually around 50 miles from Windsor Locks. Okay, and you have a great website with a lot of informative information, and uh, you also offer some wonderful <laughs> features that, like that's this. A, and, uh, and we have some uh, of the products right. that are uh, right beside you that uh, folks can use on their lawn. Um, with your uh, help, of course, you can find out what you might need. We've got some um, vegetable garden, a weed preventer, all yeah. these uh, pet friendly. This is new to the uh, pet waste to the disposal. Website. Uh, it's kind of like a, a dog septic system. Fabulous. Yeah. That will come in handy. Guys, you're paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> well, folks, you can get in touch with uh, Kenny. He does some really beautiful work there, and he makes a conscious effort to keep uh, his work pet 
friendly. So you can check out his designs at Ken's Landscape Designs, a great website, a very informative www.kenslandscapedesigns.com. The phone number, Ken? 860-292-8524. Terrific. Okay. Uh, thank you so much, Ken. Thank you for being here. Very, <laughs> very uh, informative for all of us. And coming up next, some spectacular visitors soaring their way to Connecticut. Stay tuned. <laughs> Hey, hey, hey.